is electric. Hi everyone, welcome back for another energy related video and today, today I've been looking at my stats and realising that we're at the end of the winter period. So it's a good time to summarise what our heating system has been doing and how well it's performed. How many kilowatt hours have we consumed and how did that compare to last year? And then the breakdown by device as well. So that's what I want to do in this video, give you an update on our winter heating. For our hybrid heating system, We've got a uh, air to air, uh, air conditioning type heating system. So it's a heat pump outside, an eight kilowatt inverter with three internal units of 3.7 kilowatts and 2.7 kilowatts. And then that's for the core of the house. That's for the lounge, the hallway and our main bedroom. That's the main core of heating that we use. But then we've got the bathrooms, the wet rooms. Now in those, we've got uh, electric immersions in the radiators, the towel rails. So those are heated independently using smart plugs, smart switches, and those come on and off throughout the day. But those rooms, as I said, are heated separately. We've also got some infrared um, heating panels as well. One in the cloakroom, which is a duplicate to the immersion towel rail heating that we've got. That was a test originally to see which would work best, but actually I like having them both on. It heats the room up faster, it sort of superheats the room, and it's the most comfortable bathroom that we've got. So I actually quite like the combination of a towel rail on a really low power rating and an infrared panel as well. So much so I'm probably going to add another panel into uh, our ensuite to do the same. I've really enjoyed that. Of course having multiple heaters in there it does consume more energy, which we'll see in the stats in just a moment. So we've got a hybrid system, the main heat pump system, um, Toshiba air conditioning, plus the hybrid side of things with some infrared panels and separate rooms, even some guest rooms. We don't have radiators on, we don't have a central heating system. We have an independent heater in that room if we have a guest staying over. So that heating period, what I noticed was that we didn't turn the heating system on consistently until the 22nd of October last year. So that's when the period started. And on the 16th of February, it was the first day that we actually started turning the heating off, that there was enough sunshine, there was enough residual heat in the house that we didn't need the heating system on. And when we did turn it on, it was only on for a few hours. So the core of our heating for winter is 22nd of October to the 16th of February. In that period, we've consumed 1,012 kilowatt hours. But of course, that's a little bit of October and a little bit of February and everyone's heating will be different. So for comparison purposes, the core key months are November, December and January. So those three months are the winter heating months for us here in Norfolk in the UK. So the stats for those. For the whole of October last year, it was 87 kilowatt hours. Then November, 236 kilowatt hours. December, 275. January 335 and up till the 19th of February when I'm recording this it was 94 kilowatt hours in February as well averaging just under five kilowatt hours a day but as I said like today the heating's off I don't actually need any heating at the moment so February is going to be a very low month so the three core months 846 kilowatt hours that's three months and all of it is at 7.5 pence a kilowatt hour for energy from octopus intelligent so that's a total cost of 63 pounds and 45 pence for 2023-24 heating over those winter months if i look at the full period from the october to the february dates that was 1012 kilowatt hours as i said and a total of 73 pounds 93 so depending on whether you're looking at the total winter cost or the uh, just the three month total there's only 12 pound difference between the two so how does that compare to last year? Well, last year, October was 75 kilowatt hours, slightly less. Last November, 169 kilowatt hours. I think last November I tested returning on the oil boiler. So I think that's why we only had 169 kilowatt hours last year in November. December was 298 kilowatt hours last year compared to the 275 this year. So just slightly uh, less this year. December and January last year 257 kilowatt hours and January this year 335 kilowatt hours so we've increased in January quite a lot now I have been trying to wean myself off using our log burner so we've used less logs during the month we've burned wood less this winter um, I haven't actually got the stats for exactly how many logs less it is, but it's probably in the region of 100 to 200 less logs a year so far. 
and that has meant we've used the heating system a bit more. I also think this winter period, I haven't been playing with it as much. So it's just been on and turned on and left on a lot longer. Sometimes it'll come on at three o'clock in the morning and then stay on until about eight o'clock at night before it gets turned off. Now I think in 2023, the previous winter period, I think I was turning it on and off um, in a lot smaller periods. So we've left it on more consistently this year. But how does that compare on a device by device level? Where is that heating being used? Well, this winter period, the breakdown is for our air conditioning system, the Toshiba system, 636 kilowatt hours. The cloakroom is 101 kilowatt hours. That's the um, immersion in the towel rail. The ensuite bathroom was 91 kilowatt hours, so it's similar but slightly less. The cloakroom infrared radiator was another 100 kilowatt hours, though. So it's exactly the same as the cloakroom radiators. We really have double the amount of heat going into that room. It's on for longer and it is warmer in there. The guest room, just 15 kilowatt hours. The guest bathroom, 23 kilowatt hours. And the dehumidifier, 15 kilowatt hours. So that's a little bit of laundry um, drying, but also just dehumidifying when I notice the humidity levels in the house are a little bit high. So quite low that number. And that's what's worth that's what's worth really looking at, the detail of these numbers. When you compare to last year, that breakdown, the Toshiba air conditioning system, 526 kilowatt hours, so slightly less last year. As I said, we've been using it a little bit more this year, but the cloakroom last year was only 38. We've increased the cloakroom heating a lot this year. The ensuite, 74 last year versus 91 this year, so a similar amount. Cloakroom infrared, we didn't have that heater in last year, so it was zero. So yeah, cloakroom heating has gone up a good 160, 170 kilowatt hours. Whereas I think last year I was hardly turning it on and not worrying about it because, you know, you only pop into a bathroom for a couple of minutes. Does it really matter whether it's warm? Well, I've worked out, actually, yes, I quite like a warm bathroom throughout the day. So whether you call that a luxury, a waste, an extravagance, or just normal, I have no idea how you'd refer to that. But i found the balance, we like that room a little bit warmer and hence we've used more heating this year. The guest room um, heating was 37 kilowatt hours last year because actually Charlotte was living at home for some of that year, that winter period, and hence that was heated more. This year she has her own apartment in Norwich, so uh, we don't have to heat that room as much. Same for the bathroom. This year we only heated 23 kilowatt hours. Last year was 98 kilowatt hours. Obviously having a, a warm bathroom for someone that's going to use it regularly was important. So we've got some things going up and some things going down. The cloakroom's gone up, the air to air heating system's up slightly, but the guest and the bathroom are down. But dehumidifier, this is what I think is a really big one and it could have been the title for the video. Um, 15 kilowatt hours this year for dehumidification, 106 kilowatt hours last year. Now, what I noticed was when I looked at my stats, I was using the dehumidifier as a heater in our bedroom. So we had a desiccant um, dehumidifier in there. So rather than turn the heating system on, we turned the dehumidifier on and it did twofold. It increased the temperature because it did output some heat and also reduced humidity levels. But this year, we haven't had to use the dehumidifier hardly at all. Humidity levels in our house have been really low. Just generally, I've noticed that they've been hitting 40s and 50s at times when it was always 60s and 70s in the year before. So humidity level has come right down through increased usage of the Toshiba air conditioning system because we're using the Toshiba air conditioning system as a heater in our bedroom instead of the dehumidifier. So I can see that there's um, a difference between the usage. I can provide some heat and some humidity improvement with a dehumidifier, but I can achieve the same level, in fact, better levels of humidity in the house by increasing the amount of times we're using the um, air conditioning system. Now that's not actually extracting moisture from the air. It is just heat coming out of it and it's forced air pushing into the room. So it is not extracting the moisture in the air conditioning system that only does that when it's in cooling mode whereas the dehumidifier is extracting the moisture what i've noticed now that we're in february and we've turned the heating system off i have noticed a little bit of condensation coming back and humidity levels rising into the high 60s even into 70 percent first thing in the morning so as soon as the heating is coming off humidity levels are rising again so this um, heat pump system the air to air 
heating system is helping reduce humidity in the house as well. Now you could say, you know, why not turn the heating system back on if we've got high humidity levels? Well, it's already too warm. Our bedroom in the morning is 17 to 18 degrees already. So having a heating system on, boosting it to 18, 19, 20 degrees is just too warm for us. So it's that comfort level. So what I'm noticing is when it's really cold, the heating system is doing a fantastic job at reducing humidity and condensation. But in times where the heating system's off, there's nothing looking after humidity in the house. And maybe that's the time to turn back on the dehumidifier. But of course, when it's raining and it's so moist outside, you're constantly basically fighting the moisture in the house, especially when it's warming up and you're opening more doors and windows. So it's a funny balance, isn't it, with humidity and condensation, those sort of things. And hence, that, that really could be a video on its own. So how have you got on this winter? How many kilowatt hours have you used? What sort of heating system have you been using? What sort of temperatures have you been getting to? It only dropped as low as minus five here in Norfolk this winter. But for us, I'm really pleased with that result. Really, really pleased. So the three main heating months, 846 kilowatt hours, 63 pounds 45 for our heating costs. Now that of course excludes hot water. So you've got to remember that. With a central heating boiler system, that will be combined in doing your hot water probably as well as doing your heating. So for us, we've got another, I think it's roughly 70 kilowatt hours a month to add back on to those costs for heating hot water because that's done separately. Our hybrid system is doing everything separately, heating each room separately, uh, heating hot water separately. And uh, yeah, with those different array of heating devices, it's actually quite handy because if you've got an issue with one for any reason, you've still got heat elsewhere. So I'm finding this hybrid system is working really, really well for us. How, how difficult is it to use? It's not just a thermostat, you turn a central thermostat in the hallway and then everything turns on. Each individual room has a schedule, each individual room has the amount of time that the heater comes on for and then can be turned on and off manually as well. Is that more cumbersome? Do you know, to be honest, it has worked out so slick and so smooth. Only a couple of times a year do I have to adjust the timers and then basically how difficult is it to press one button on my tablet to turn a heater off or on if we need extra heating or less heating. So for us, do you know, this, this separation of devices has worked really well. And I just cannot believe it. Our heating cost is 846 kilowatt hours for three months at £63.45. There are people spending thousands of pounds on heating their home. And I suppose that's one thing to say, you know, everybody's usage is different. It's not just about how many kilowatt hours you use, it's the combination of having an efficient heating system, but using it efficiently. I close doors as much as we turn off lights as we leave a room. So separating the heating in the rooms really does help. So leaving doors open to spread heat through the house or closing doors to keep heat in, depending on what you're doing in your house. That works really well for us. The rooms we're not using, the spare bedroom, the spare bathroom, the spare downstairs, I don't know what you would call it, a dining room, but for us it's a junk room, a storage room, it's where I keep all my camera equipment. Uh, that, that has no heating. And this kitchen that I'm in now has no heating devices other than a portable fan heater under the table that I'm sat at. So um, we don't have a central heating system and not having heating in some of those rooms and not having the heating on 24 hours a day is saving us money. That's how we're reducing the kilowatt hours, not just by having that air-to-air -air heating system. So it's not just the devices that are resulting in the low usage of heating, it's the way we use heat. And obviously that doesn't suit everyone. Some people want to use more heating. Some people want to have doors open all the time and heat every single room in the house. Uh, I noticed the other day we're around our neighbors and uh, that's how they have their heating. It's an oil boiler uh, like we used to use and all of their rooms were open. They were heating all of the rooms and there was a consistent same heat across the entire house. But their heating cost is thousands a year. Ours is 63 pounds 45. So it's not, it's not that they're more comfortable than us. That it's, they're using their heating system differently and that's how they feel comfortable. I'm completely fine sat here in the kitchen. It's about 15 to 16 degrees in the kitchen at the moment. I'm in a t-shirt. Um, I've just been for a walk with Cracker. Um, I'm plenty warm enough, but I will now go 
into the lounge to do the editing of this video later and the temperature in there is going to be about 18 degrees so I'm a lot lot warmer and if the sun comes out the heat in this room and the lounge as well will start to rise or if it starts to drop then that's when I turn the heating on anyway everyone's usage is different so uh, don't criticize me for having really low bills as if I'm a Scrooge or whatever it is plenty warm enough in this house and uh, at no time are we ever feeling oh god you know it's freezing in here what are we doing we, we manage the heat quite well and uh, it's across just two people as well there's just Susan and me and if we're both comfortable it's fine some people in the homes obviously have more people especially if you've got children in the house then you typically have to have the heating on a lot more because they moan a lot more anyway there you go there's my stats for this winter 2023 and 2024 it's been a really good month and I've uh, I've really enjoyed experimenting with the system and learning how we use it but seeing those stats by the individual devices telling me that it's about a third of our heating goes towards heating the wet rooms and two thirds of the heating goes to heating the core of the house with the air conditioning system. That's about the, the percentages on those stats that I've given. So I, I found it fascinating look at those stats and I hope that's useful to you to compare and I hope that encourages some people to think about going electric heating. Because if you've got solar panels, you've got an electric car, you've got yourself a cheap electric tariff like we have with Octopus, then changing everything to be electric just really makes sense. That strategy of combining all of your energy uses, get rid of diesel, get rid of petrol, get rid of oil heating, gas boilers, get rid of all of that and go electric. Add solar, add battery storage, add an electric car. So you use more electricity, but use a cheap tariff. And then it's just saving you an absolute fortune. So for me, I'm pleased with the level we're at. It looks like energy prices are gonna come down for the next couple of years. So our energy bills and heating bills are gonna be absolutely negligible. In fact, if you've seen some of my other videos, because I've now gone on to an export tariff and I'm being paid 15 pence a kilowatt hour for what we're gonna export, we're gonna end up with a net zero bill by the look of it. So all of this heating cost, the 63 quid, that's gonna be fully paid for by export in the summer of energy that I don't new, use from our solar panels. So this system, this plan, this strategy is definitely working out. Going electric is the right thing to do, not just for the environment, but for your pocket as well. Thanks for watching everyone. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed the stats. Look forward to reading the comments about how you've got on in the winter. Uh, it might still be winter where you are. It might still be absolutely freezing. Winter's not over. Um, it's a little bit milder down south here in Norfolk. Take care. See you again soon for more videos. Bye for now.